welcome at this video where I explain how to test the correlation among nominal and ordinal variables and between interval variables and multiple groups. Um, so what we will discuss uh, this video is a cross tabulation and the ANOVA test. So here's an overview of all the different test statistics that you can use. If your dependent variable is nominal, meaning it has two values, for instance um, gender, men and women, uh, you would need the chi-square value. If it is ordinal, uh, meaning for instance um, education with three variables, uh, three levels or four levels, that would be considered ordinal, or maybe marital status, which would be multinomial, as there is no uh, ordering between the categories you would also need the chi-square value. If you have an interval ratio level variable, um, like the income scales that we used in the last video, then depending on how many groups you want to compare, you would need the t-test or the ANOVA test. If you compare two groups, uh, meaning, for instance, gender, uh, you would need a t-test. But if there are multiple groups, which can be interpreted as a multinomial variable, then you would need an ANOVA test. Lastly, uh, if both variables are measured at the interval level, you can use a correlation. So a cross tabulation uh, tests the relationship between nominal uh, or ordinal level variables. Or you compare two or multiple groups. Um, there are no dependent or independent variables, so it does not matter which ones are the rows and which ones are the column, uh, not for the statistics. So how can you uh, get SPSS to run a cross step? You of course can go to Analyze, uh, Descriptive Statistics and Cross Steps, but I will show you how to do it in Syntax. Crow, I want to compare uh, the way how people view themselves as a world citizen by marital status. I also would like to have for each cell uh, the count, which is the observed frequency, the expected frequencies, and the row percentages. Additionally, I would like to have the chi-square value. So one thing that I have not discussed that with you, uh, but similarly to the t-test uh, and the correlation, you also uh, test a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis in this case is that there is no relationship, similarly to the correlation. Uh, so if there would be no relationship, you would view that these expected frequencies are uh, very close to the observed frequencies. If that would be the case for each cell, you would get a highly non-significant value of the chi-square test. However, as you can see here, there's quite a substantial difference between these ob uh, observed and expected frequencies. And therefore, this chi-square value is very high, it's 69. With a degree, uh, degrees of freedom of 15, means that it is highly significant go back to the formula, uh, here you will see uh, that actually you s these differences between the observed and expected frequencies for each cell, uh, those are squared and divided by the expected frequencies. These numbers are summed across for each cell and together this makes uh, uh, this becomes the chi-square value. The degrees of freedom depend on how large your table is. So you multiply the number of columns minus one times the number of rows minus one. A chi-square value also, so for one degrees of freedom it has this distribution. And the more degrees of freedom you get, the larger your uh, cross step will be. Uh, the more flat the distribution will become. Now using the degrees of freedom and uh, a specific uh, value of the um, uh, confidence interval, you obtain a chi-square value 
from in this table you see chi-square value uh, and this table is actually the border so if you obtain a larger chi-square value than this one uh, this means that in a 2x2 two two table with a degree of freedom of 1 a larger value than 3.84 would mean that uh, there is significant relationship between the two variables. Now in our case we had uh, 15 degrees of freedom, meaning that the border relationship would be uh, 25, uh, but we obtained a chi-square value of 69, which is highly significant therefore. So now we go on with the ANOVA test. Um, there we measure the variables at the internal interval or ratio level and this is usually uh, this is the dependent variable and we compare uh, multiple groups how they measure on this interval variable so first if you want to conduct an F test you just type in one way, which is short for one way ANOVA. Um, and we test the income. Uh, and we test it by the marital status, which uh, would be recognized by SPSS as a group variable. So here we see the ANOVA table. The ANOVA table uh, depicts the sum of squares of the between group variance and the within group variance, and the F value with the significance value next to it. So let's go to the formula. Uh, so the formula of the F-ratio, um, the, the F-test is usually uh, interpreted as the ratio of the explained versus the unexplained variance. Now what do you really want to know with an F-test? You want to know whether the differences between groups are larger than the differences within groups. So that's actually what you compare. You compare the differences between groups, the sum of square errors, with the sum of squared errors within groups. Now the degrees of freedom are different for between groups and within groups, depends on the number of groups or the sample size versus the number of groups. Now in our case uh, the F value is 5 uh, and similar to the chi-square value it follows its own distribution, has its own stable given the degrees of freedom and according to this table uh, our F value is significant meaning that uh, the marital status, uh, the people with different marital status have a different income level. So if you want to know more about uh, the F value, uh, I advise you to look at the statistics. You can also test the homogeneity of the variances. Oh, I forgot. Um, um, so here you have the Levine's test uh, of the homogeneity of variances, similar uh, to the t-test that we saw before, where we compare two groups. We also assume that the variances are equal in this test. Uh, as you can see, it is not significant, meaning that the variances can be considered equal. Now, in this first table, the descriptors, you see the mean, and these are actually tested in an ANOVA. We test uh, whether these means are different, uh, given the standard deviation of these groups. Now, as you can see, uh, the single people have the highest income, after that the married people, and then the separated people and divorced people. Lastly, living together as married and the widowed people are the poorest in the sample.